Welcome, travelers, to the Xbox Passport Podcast. I am uh, here. We're gonna. T- this is a very special episode. We're gonna be talking about our thoughts on Redfall. But hi, I'm Steve Saylor, and I am here with uh, traveling with my co-host. From Girls on Games, Leah Jewer. Hi, Leah. How are you? Hello. I'm doing excellent. I hope everything's good with you, too. I'm good. I, you know, I'm good. I, I, I was trying to, you know, do this, ep- like, the, the intro solo, like, I like I, without looking at the script again, and I, I think I botched it, but you know what? You, you all know what you're here to see. Um, but also, what you're here to see, because, you, like, you know what? We, you can see me anywhere on this channel, but the one person that you definitely uh, need to see more of, who has been in the in the center of a lot of what we're talking about today, uh, and has been all over the internet, we've got the the voice of video games from Kind of Funny and Gamer Tag Radio, Paris. Paris Lilly here. Hey, Paris, how are you? Oh, I'm doing good. Thank you for having me. And uh, yeah, it's, it's been quite the interesting week. <laughs> it has been. Yeah, because so to kind of get into context, this is our going to be talking about Redfall and our Redfall review, at least Lee and I's thoughts on it. We know it's it's a week after the uh, the game has come out, but we wanted to at least give ourselves at least a little bit extra time to kind of, you know, play it a little bit more and, and kind of like really try to cement our thoughts. And then... Everything kind of just started happening this week with uh, Paris having Phil Spencer on the X cast, you know, our sister show in, in, in the Xbox world. And then uh, all the everything that came out of that. So we're going to talk about all of that this week or at least this episode. And we're kind of sort of framing it as sort of like what happened to Redfall? Um, so first off, though, uh, Paris, why don't you tell us like uh, before we get into all that, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and who you are, what you do, and if, if for those who may not like who live absolutely under the video game rock that is the video game industry that may not know who you are why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself sure try and keep it short and sweet so my my name's Parrish Lilly um I've been in the content creation biz I guess if you want to call it I started off podcasting as far back as 2006 been doing it pretty much ever since that point um as you mentioned at the top um I'm part of a game podcast called Gamer Tag Radio um Back in, God, was that 2020, 2020? I can't even keep track anymore. But um, I joined Kind of Funny uh, part-time to be a co-host on their Xbox-centric show, Kind of Funny X-Cast. I have, like, my own personal YouTube channel that I'll throw content up on every now and again. Um, You know, I'm pretty active on on social media. I guess my handle, at Vicious696, for those that don't know. But, um, yeah, I I love talking about gaming. I I love gaming. Um, Obviously, I've been kind of more xbox centric but you know i talk playstation i talk everything so it's i just i just love gaming love talking about it love analyzing the industry and uh you know feel i've been pretty fortunate over the past few years with some of the opportunities that have come my way so that, that's pretty much me yeah and we're one of the f- a few hosts uh, uh, of uh, a showcase uh from xbox too so you know we got uh we got that sort of com- camaraderie yes going on yes there. we do uh, <laughs> so let's okay leah let, 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 let's talk about redfall um so why don't you tell like leah why don't you go through and tell us sort of like what are your general thoughts uh of the game and uh and yeah, you know what like you just that, yeah. What what do you think? <laughs> Likes, dislikes. What, what, what do you got? <laughs> yeah. So I had a lot of uh, high anticipations for this game because I love vampires. Like uh, I was telling you on the side when we were kind of chatting through how we're going to tackle this podcast. Um, <laughs> when they announced this game, like I read a lot of fantasy romance novels and vampires are often a big piece of that. Um, you know, grew up reading like Twilight, things like that. Like vampires are something that I find are not often in video games in in a sense, too. It's usually like zombies or something, right? Some other monster. But there's something about vampires that I find are, yes, frightening, but not gory. So like I find them more approachable. And then, of course, there's always like the the special, you know, like magical, mystical thing around them. So when Redfall was announced, when we got to see the stuff last year at FanFest, um, I was stoked. I was like, this is perfect. This is the type of game that I want to play. So when I did dive in on Wednesday and start getting into it, um, I'm not going to lie. I was disappointed. Um, I feel like what Arcane has put together for us here is almost like the beginnings of something great, but it's got a lot of missing pieces that over time, or if this was their second or third iteration of doing this type of open world game, we would have, 
you know, that would have been part of it. It would have been natural for them to put it in there. But because they're not, they haven't done that yet. I kind of knock it up to like, we Assassin's Creed is Assassin's Creed now because Assassin's Creed one existed and they've made changes over the years. And it kind of gives me that vibe where it's just, it's not where we expect first person shooter open world games to be right now. It gives me tons of vibes of they were striving to do the Far Cry thing, but it's just missing some of the main mechanics that I look for. So when I was out exploring and looking for things, I felt stuff was empty. I felt things were too easy. Um, And there was a lot of mechanics in the training on how to do things and why I was doing things that were lacking. So it's like... I want to say it was like half baked where they had the MVP, the minimal viable product. They were getting ready and they were like, here's the basis. We're going to stack everything on top of it. But unfortunately, we didn't get all the extras that were supposed to come later to really like bring this game into full fruition. So, yeah, that's kind of where I stand with it right now. Yeah, uh, I'm kind of similar to you. And and I should mention, like, this is one of the, the great things that I personally like about this podcast is that even though it is sponsored by and presented by Xbox Canada. Um, we still have the the, the sort of editorial uh, way of being able to like, hey, if, if things are, if, we do, if we're not a fan of a game or we're not, rev- like we don't find our review sort of like being super great, we're we're able to talk about that and it's and we don't have to have like have anything through approval in that in that sense and that's kind of where i feel with this is that i wanted to see the good in this game i really did i i i I was looking through it and i was like i could see where there like people can have fun with this i can i can see where people would have fun with the with the gunplay and just sort of the overall like trying to take a city back from uh from vampires and i can see the throughput of something there and i can see the magic that arcane has in their in their pedigree now granted this is arcane austin which is so it's not necessarily arcane leone which has done death loop and dishonored mm-hmm. in the past um arcane austin basically their their main their main game that they've worked on was prey yes uh, and this is their second game that is specifically from that studio so i and and i could see that this one was it was very ambitious in trying to be able to create an, an open world um, that had a bunch of like looter shooter elements, and I can see that the, there is elements of the 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 classic sort of genius level design that they that Arcane is kind of known for. Um, but I, I feel like that this is sort of like they, they as we kind of talked about a little bit before, and as you met, you 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 told me it was like kind of put it in perspective is that okay the game is there the the the, the mechanics are there the system is there there's just not enough content. Um, mm. to to basically to 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 do. There's not enough things to like. Yeah, there's things to do, but it's like there's not that much like in there. And there was like in the case of point one of the early missions is you have to go and place a like a watch on a on a, on on, a, on someone's grave, and then you have to and then you have to go back to a firehouse, and then they say, oh, that they left you like a little present and like in a car and some in some in the trunk of a car, so you got to go back out to the to another house that has that thing, and then it's like a shotgun you pick up, and then you go back to the firehouse, and they're like, oh, the doctor just like the the guy the guy's father or the guy's son just left, so you now got to go back to the to the to the cemetery, and then you find out that basically I'm like, I don't care about spoilers. It, you find out the father turned into a vampire. I'm like, it seems not a lot. It's it's like it was kind of like one of those like, oh, you could have done this mission in five minutes, but now you've basically sprawled this out into a 15 minute thing. And yeah. I didn't see the point. Like I didn't see the point in it. And like even there was even like I'll, I don't care. I'll find all spoil. Like there's one there's one side mission where uh, essentially like you go and then you find out there's an abducted brother. Uh, from someone that's in your fu- that, that's in your sort of home base, and you have to go and and to this house to be able to try to take him back. And it turns out that it was it was a trap all along. And you get you, 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 the, the house explodes, and you just got guys coming at you. And then you and then it's like you complete that, and then you go back to the firehouse to basically tell like the brother, hey, uh, like you're ready. You think you're going to confront them, basically being like, what the heck? You just sent me into a trap, but also where's your brother? And the guy's like, eh, at least you tried. And I was like. That's the response you give? Like, at least you tried? <laughs> like, just, what about all, like, it, it, so it seemed as if there was just not a heck of a lot there to play. And, like, I'll even say from the accessibility side, I am thinking of, like, we'll probably be doing an accessibility review of this, but there is also kind of, like, the, there, like, 
accessibility in general that works, but then also is not fully baked in uh, either. Um, there's stuff that I think that helps and will help disabled players, but when it comes to a lot of the, sort of the core mechanics, I found that essentially there was stuff that was kind of missing and it could be that they sort of jumped in halfway through and it sort of got in, integrated into the Xbox sort of accessibility ecosystem. So a lot of stuff like design decisions probably weren't made with accessibility in mind. That's kind of where I saw it. Um, but it wasn't really like, it didn't really ha like it had some things that I liked and some things that I didn't. And it just, it didn't really help out um, in sort of making this an accessible experience either. So I think it just, yeah, it just, it, it, it the thing that I was like, I was fatigued from playing a lot of open world games the past few years, and I kind of stopped playing. This is kind of the first one I really jumped back into. And this is what reminded me of like the fatigue of, of open world games when there's not much there. And it's like, well, what's the point um, as well? Uh, Paris, like, uh, what, what did you, what did you think? Are, like, uh, now that sort of, you had some time to think you did review for, for kind of funny X cast, which I do recommend, uh, checking that out. But, um, Definitely. what were your sort of general thoughts about, uh, about Redfall? Yeah. So on, on kind of funny, um, I, I gave the lead score for Redfall and I gave it a two out of five, uh, which is considered bad, uh, for, you know, on that scale, which is unfortunate to, to a lot of the things of what you both said is because, we went into this, the concept of Redfall is phenomenal. Small town mm -hmm. taken over by vampires. You're coming in for a player co-op. There's this loot system with weapons, different stats, drops. You're just thinking, wow, you're going to go into all these different scenarios through, through like the traditional story mode, side missions. There'll be, you know, you know, real time world events that are happening in here that, that you'll confront. This is the, the, the I don't even want to say the promise, but the vision of what you're assuming that you're going to get, not to mention Arcane is making this obviously know what their legacy is. Like you, you already mentioned Dishonored and Prey, and we got what felt like an alpha version of all yeah. of that. Ultimately, mm -hmm. this simply does not feel like it's ready. It needs more time. And when I say it needs more time, I'm not even talking from a technical bug standpoint. I'm talking from a system level standpoint, from a content level standpoint, where you've you've laid down the bare bones of what you need for this. But and and, and I'm not being like over the top when I say this, this needs at a minimum 12 to 18 more months of development time before I feel like this should have been shipped out of the door. Um, so to, what we got was surprising because in, interesting enough, I, I can't remember if you, you did the preview as well, Steve, but you know, went to the preview event that they had um, out here in Los Angeles. And I know they did a few around the globe, but um, we only got to play about 90 minutes when we played. And it was kind of just a vertical slice of very early in the game. It was the one mission where you're gonna go to the house and you know you you had you go in the dollhouse so that mission i'm sure, sure you've done that early on so it was that one that was the mission that you did early on couple you know things in the in, in the open world but you're thinking man this is really early in the game so this is kind of ramping you up to what you're eventually going to get with redfall and as i said in the kind of funny review what we got in that first hour is the game that's the game mm -hmm. that is the mm -hmm. entire game i played I don't know, probably about at least 25 hours that, that I played of it across PC and on the Xbox Series X. Um, I think one of the glaring issues is not not to mention there's not an there's not enough going on in the world. It's very empty. But when you do have enemy encounters, there's no AI. There's minimal AI. They're not sure. really reacting to you in any type of a realistic way. Um, it's pretty easy to take down because, uh, you know, Leo, you mentioned that before. Th there was no challenge here mm -hmm. with this at all again it felt very early on concept as if here's where we're going this is what we're thinking we still need more time to finish iterating everything that we want to put into this game that's what this felt like to me so in that respect oh not to mention again the loot system as i was saying before the weapons don't matter I don't care yeah. from the first gun you get, from the first shotgun you get to the one that the Rook will give you, right? It's quote, mm -hmm. quote, an exotic shotgun. It's not, They're not doing anything special. Even when you start to get some of the higher level ones that do have some stat perks on it, they don't matter. The skill yeah. tree yeah. doesn't really matter. The special abilities don't really matter because there's no challenge that is forcing you to learn how to synchronize between using your weapons versus your abilities. 
not to mention the the skill points that you get are very sparse. You're you're not going to yes. fill out that skill tree playing playing this mm-hmm. game. Um, taking this even into the decision, which a lot of people were were you know upset not upset and maybe they were upset, but people obviously questioned was having the um, even the solo part being online only, and mm. when you play in co op, only the host story progression matters. Whereas, sure, your st- statistics and leveling up will carry over back if you go into a solo match. But I ran into a scenario where I tried to do something in the solo match and basically there was like a game breaking bug where something I needed was missing. Mm. Played co-op. It was there. I did it. But guess what? Go back to my solo match. It wasn't there. Not there. And I don't have that story progression to continue mm. past it. That sucks. So, so it's it's things like this that... And obviously, I'm sure we'll, we'll get into it, you know, post launch and obviously some some statements and comments that have been made. But this is why it's baffling to me that Xbox launched this game in this mm. state at mm. this time, because it goes beyond just the game itself. It goes beyond. It goes to the perception of Xbox itself right now. Obviously, we know there's a lot going on that this was your first seventy dollar next gen only game. And, mm-hmm. and we know you only get one chance to make a first impression. This was that first impression. It's not a right. good one. So yeah. I don't know. It's, it's, it's just disappointing overall because this is something I wanted to embrace. This is something that I was really looking forward to. And it just simply did not deliver. And I think it has an opportunity, if it had more time, to realize that vision that Arcane had. But at this point, I mean, let, let's just be realistic about it. Does this have a redemption story? Are we talking about Redfall in 18 months? I don't think so. Honestly, are we talking about Redfall in three months? I don't think so. And that's unfortunate. I mean, I see what you like what you mean. And I and I think um I, I, I sort of have thought about whether or not because we were kind of talking about okay, like like as we were saying, like the game is there, the mechanics are there. Sure, there could definitely be some tweaking to the AI to make them a little bit more responsive, and 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 um, and I definitely could definitely use that for sure because there were times where I could take out a vampire pretty easy, but then there were times where they were just like right up in my face, and I can't see and, and aim to be able to do anything. But you're right, like even finding some of the we- like some of the weapons, like I found like a stake hunter weapon that essentially could take a vampire out in just one shot, and I'm yeah. This is like so like an hour one and I'm like, well, shouldn't I have at least been able like shouldn't the vampires be at least a little bit of a challenge right. like at first uh, like I would think okay yeah the the gunmen or the or the cultists are the first thing you kind of encounter yeah sure take them out like they're, those are pretty easy but the vampires should have at least have some sort of oh shoot what the heck am I supposed to do very early on uh, and then you build up to that but I I wonder if and maybe this is a, a question for, like as a question for both of you you said that like are we going to be talking about this game in 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 a couple of months do you th- this reminds me of when like when game pass kind of first launched when sea of thieves launched mm-hmm. that sea of thieves we like it had it had a similar thing where it was very content light Do, and but they stuck with like rare stuck with it mm-hmm. and basically it became a much better game and a more robust game that people actually do enjoy um and like do you think that this like this is maybe how xbox sort of potentially saw this that okay maybe it's not necessarily worthy enough to, to or at least enough to to delay this did do you think that they maybe saw this as a sea of thieves situation that okay we're launch this and we're gonna and, and then and then we'll keep adding content to kind of make this game uh, as more playable as they wanted as sort of a live service game. I do not think that was the case uh, because I just think Redfall is not technically a, a live service game. They're not asking you to hey come in for season five of Redfall. It's mm. this is the game. Sure, they, I know they were talking about adding a couple more characters and there are going to be some cosmetic items, things like that that we could get down the road. But this is the game. So this isn't mm-hmm. a thing of, and let's, again, using Sea of Thieves as an example, Sea of Thieves should be the lessons learned on why you don't launch a game too early because look how long it took them, you know, rare to work on it and iterate on it to get it to where it is today, which is phenomenal. Not to mention you're living out that pirate fantasy. I just think it, it's apples and oranges when it comes to that. I don't see a scenario two years from now where Redfall 
in that same on that same map unless you're adding to it and there's there's more there locations and things that you're doing story structures uh the vampire hearts which i forgot to bring up to again underwhelming because oh, yeah. i thought there was gonna be a lot of diversity in that and there just wasn't um i i, I don't see it that's why I guess, you know, obviously the Phil interview that we that we did, um, you know, he mentioned that they're committed to it and continue working on it. But I just I'm not seeing enough there that this is something people are going to want to talk about in, in two years from now. I don't see mm-hmm. people playing Redfall in 2024, 2025. Hey, we've we're rebooting the game. We've updated all these things. I think it's going to be too, uh, too little too late. I think the game's going to have a reputation at that point that people are not going to go back to visit it. And even when I think about it from a business standpoint, what's the incentive? Because how are you my, it, Redfall doesn't have a, mon- a monetization track. So it isn't mm-hmm. like, oh, hey, we're going to work on this game and get it to this state because now we can get people to come back and monetize it. And obviously me as a gamer, I don't care about that. That's not that's not my job to worry about how they could monetize that game. But it's not built to do that. Whereas I'll give you another example of a game that did get delayed after there was some initial poor reception for its reveal. Suicide Squad killed the Justice League. WB sure. saw that. Rocksteady saw that. And they go, nope, we cannot put this out right now. Let's delay it because that has an opportunity to find legs and it has a built-in monetization track because it has mm-hmm. a battle pass, right? So yeah. they obviously took some lessons learned from some other games that came out that were not ready and they pumped the brakes and they go, let's push this into 2024 and see if we can tweak this enough to make an enjoyable experience that people will want to spend money on. Whereas Redfall is not built to do that. So I don't see how, look, I again, I understand what Phil said. I understand you want Arcane to r- realize the vision that they have. I just think me knowing myself, and I'm only speaking from a personal standpoint, this was my first impression with it. There's so many other things that are coming out over the next calendar year that I don't see me going, you know what? Let me put Starfield down. Let me put Spider-Man 2 <laughs> down, and I'm going to go play Redfall again. I don't see yeah. me doing that. You know, yeah. so so that's kind of where I think we're at, which, again, is unfortunate. I personally think this should have been delayed until 2024. I think of all the negative press that we've seen this week with it, they would have had less by saying we're delaying this again to 2024. Yeah. People would have groaned and moaned for a week and then nobody would have cared. Hey, what are you going to show the showcase? Whereas now people are going that better be one of the greatest showcases of all time. There's a lot of pressure on what Xbox is going to do in June. That's the difference, right. in my opinion. Very true. Yeah. yeah. What are your thoughts? I even think it would have to be delayed. Like, if they were to delay it, they'd have to push it even back further, like 2025, 2026. Because the problem that I saw with the game is that not only is it content bare, it's systems bare. And stuff that, like, you're just used to having in games that, like, it's almost like they didn't have an engine that did certain things. There's a day night cycle, but absolutely no way for you to tell what the day time of day or time of night it is. Right. right. It and I know happens. it doesn't have because they've they've blown out the sun. And still the vampires are out there and everything. Well, then. But still, the like there's, yeah. it, it, mm-hmm. it's weird. And then I'm always fascinated by the training systems to get someone used to a game because I've spoken about this before. I sometimes get anxiety about starting a new game because I feel finger dumb. Where I'm like, especially because you're constantly flipping between different consoles and stuff and different buttons, different mechanics, all that kind of stuff. And just getting used to this, using the controller, what my skills are, what I'm supposed to do. The very first time I left the firehouse, started going down the street, um, had a steak, had a gun, but obviously it's the like bare minimum. Encountered a vampire, kind of stumbled my way through, staked the vampire, went on. Got to the second vampire shot him up. He kind of like zoned out, went up to get the prompt. No prompt. I'm like, dude, where's my steak? Did my steak just disappear? How do I get a steak? Do I craft a steak? Right. Is it, do I go buy a steak? Where do I get the steak? <laughs> and I was just like, what, what is going on? And then I, I realized after I died, cause he came back and I kept shooting at him. And it was like the repeated for a good 10 minutes trying to figure out how to get this guy dead. And I was like, well, why didn't they explain that I needed a weapon that had a stake in it? Why didn't they give me a stake weapon with a stake in it to start or give me the option to buy more stakes? This is weird. So, like, I felt like there was, like, training mechanics that 
I hate games that like they you know like push it down your throat where you're just like here's how you do this and it's just prompt after prompt after prompt trying to training you but there needs to be something that kind of coax you through as a noob playing a game like this right so that was definitely a piece that I feel like they need there's that there's like the pinging system is really weird. Like it's just, oh, it's, there was all these dumb, different things, it right? No, it makes and like, no sense. Even, even yeah. on the map, the like you ping a spot. So you're going after these, the, the two different choppers that went down. And I'm like, so where is the sensor on the map that's going across to tell me what direction I'm supposed to go in? So I go into the map, mind you, everything is live. So someone could come up and kill you at the same time. And you don't even realize. And then you put your ping down, but it doesn't actually look like it's marking the spot. It's hovering above the spot. So I'm like, did I ping the right spot? Am right. I going actually on top of the spot? Like, where am I going? So like, I feel like they need to like strip it back down, look at each piece of the system mechanics that they need to do, get that ironed out, and then build content that me meshes with that or, or kind of do it in tandem. And that's what the game's missing. And that's why I call it like... A, you said an alpha. I said minim minimal viable product, but I don't even think it's like minimal viable product because it's not even viable. So, right. <laughs> so yeah, I, I don't know if that and with no monetization, like you mentioned, the amount of money and time and effort. In, and I'm a nerd about the business side of how games are made, even though I don't make games myself. I work in app and radio and music. I don't see why you would funnel more money into this that now hasn't even done well to begin with and you could only potentially make a fraction of that back. Right. It seems like cut your losses and run and do the next thing and just take the L. Yeah. But I don't know. It, I, I get it. They don't want to like deter the the studio or do anything like that. And it, like it could have been like just the the happenstance of multiple different errors and issues and and you know a merger and people not getting involved that should have got involved like there could have been umpteen different reasons why it came out like this but to funnel money into something that you're not really going to get the full potential out of it the roi why so yeah yeah i don't know i i, I think because coming at it from from like a, a, a semi game developer, I guess, with just from the amount of consulting and the game devs folks that I've talked to, I, I've like I've played broken games like in a broken state before. Like mm -hmm. I, it's just the nature of consulting where I'm coming at it when there's like textures not even loaded correctly right. or in or like I've even played like I'll even say this like I was uh, I, I got to play test a little bit of uh, Horizon Forbidden West uh, for accessibility and there wasn't even any like it was just a gray mesh in a lot of areas um, hmm. where it was I did like even cutscenes were just sort of like hadn't even been fully animated yet so I like I've seen broken games before so in, in a way it's like I kind of become a numb to some of like the systems uh, stuff so hearing you kind of talk about the the how you get people on like the onboarding process into the game like i could there are definitely a lot of stuff that i felt like okay yeah they'll get to this later but you're right like when it's sort of in a launch state i forget oh no right this is what they this is what the game is this is not what like okay there's stuff that could be improved upon now granted sure it could have like they could add more as as they go i mean we've seen Games have a comeback from 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 stuff like this in the past, and not to say that Redfall uh, won't have that uh, that potential possibility. But I think you're right. It just it there's like I, I feel like in a way, there like as much as we're saying, sort of like it's content light. In it, and this is sort of like this is the only word I can come up with, and, and I apologize that it's sort of like a very harsh word, but in a way, it's very soulless. There's mm -hmm. not there's not much th there for me as a player. That why should I care about Redfall? I'm jump I'm jumping in as a hero character, and I jumped in as Jacob, and because I figured that his abilities would help me out a lot, because he can highlight enemies that actually help me see, which is an accessibility thing. Plus, also stealth is kind of generally where I like to go, and Arcane is like the king of of stealth yes. when it comes to their games. So I thought, oh, okay, I'm gonna get a great stealth game, but. There was so much like there was like I didn't care about any of the characters that I was helping. I didn't know I like like, like I mentioned about the, the 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 mission about the graveyard and the father. 
that's supposed to be one of the characters that is your like he helps you he gives you like he's the doctor he's supposed to and he's kind of integrated as part of the part of the story i should know more about him and care about him why why is like am i going to be able to drop off his 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 his, his, his father's watch at his mother's grave like why like why am i doing that like i i need to feel like i need to have some direction and care about the characters that and even myself as a character yeah. uh, i need to feel like i need to be do, like why am i here but it did, i don't i didn't have that that here and it was that was what was this disappointing for me it's like sure yeah systems can be improved content can be added i'm always for that and and when studios are able to do that great i'll uh like if, if, the, if there's something that interests me i may jump back in and and be able to play it but when there's something like when there's nothing there for me to grab onto that be, that pull to jump in even after like when content stuff gets added becomes less and less because it's like well i didn't i didn't care about the game to begin with so why would you want like what are you going to do to entice me back in and i i feel like that that was what was mostly missing from from my perspective can i ask you guys a question yeah did you or do you figure out what the penalty was for dying there isn't one there isn't so, one okay so i wasn't i was like playing and i was like you die and i just got to run back but there was no other penalty for dying no no okay i think actually is like so I died quite a bit. I mean, I will say, like, oh, I yeah, as you sort yeah. of, as Trying you say, like the, the the challenge of it, there is a challenge. There is a challenge for me, and it's just mostly due to there's no auto aim or auto locking system or targeting, mm. which would have helped me out accessibility wise. Um, and I'm normally like I'm pretty good. I mean, like Paris, you know, like I play Destiny. Like yeah. I can I can I can do pretty good with like a combat bow in, in, in Destiny, and I'm so I'm I'm okay at FPS shoot, like shooters. But when this one, it just like I kept dying quite a bit. And I, the two times that where I died felt really weird once was when you go up there's a well, there's a mission in, uh, where you have to go to a lighthouse where you first meet you like you meet your first rook yeah and i like i was doing pretty well i got near the end i was in the battle with the rook i was basically just like literally circling around the top of the lighthouse just trying to be able to like back up and just keep shooting him and then i just eventually ran out of health packs and died but it and then it put me in a spot that was uh that was sort of nearby like one of the uh the markers that you can do the fast travel to and i had to basically climb back up to the lighthouse again and in order to be able to to, to finish the finish up the mission it didn't feel like that i was that i was do like i i always like i didn't i couldn't tell if it was okay are the like the enemies like that i killed before are they like completely dead now or did they respawn now that i died i i couldn't really tell it, it, until I got to the p point where I got to the rook again, and I just killed him, and like he had the same health, he had the same little health that I had that he yeah. had left. I didn't start over again, yeah. so I just basically just kept like just two shots, and he was and he was basically dead. And I was like, okay, well, what was the point? And then the second time I died, that felt kind of inconsequential. Was at one point you have to you get like this this film that you go to the theater and uh you have to be like you find out a little bit more about the kind of the main vampire that's in the first open area i won't say kind of which because you know spoil i know i'm spoiling quite a bit but <laughs> whatever uh and i and, and i was at a point in the game where supposedly kind of similar to far cry where the more you do in this sort of section the more you anger some of the vampires that essentially mm -hmm. are now going to come after you so i got I, it was at that point where oh another rook is going to come after me and i did and it, it rook kind of like caught me in, in in the theater i tried to escape and then i i died and then when i when i spawned back in again at a, at a safe house it was as if nothing happened like it yes. reset yes. The, the the meter again <laughs> and i was just weird oh, like yeah like why what, what was the point of of sort of like getting to that point of you you've angered the vampires and like oh what they just forgave you just because they di you died again like it didn't exist just, it, it didn't it didn't make it didn't make sense to me yeah that's why i think it's even beyond a year eight months well i, I think there's a lot of the a lot of the pieces are missing yeah and i think one other point that you you brought up when you were talking is with the, with the actual story aspects and the characters yeah there, there's there's no you don't there's there's zero emotional attachment to any of them and yep. and that's obviously a problem too you know just from a, a storytelling standpoint even with the cut scenes i mean they're not even animated they're what do you even call that? There's slideshows. Slideshows, kind of, thank you. Yeah, yeah. 3D, like yeah. you're frozen in time, right. like that meme everybody was doing so for a while. That's yeah. weird, too. I, I don't know. I just... Yeah. 
<laughs> and I mean, the the internet has spoken loud yes, and, yes. and exactly said exactly what we're saying. Some in way more crass terms than we're using. I feel like we're but, trying to be positive in doing this, but like the internet has spoken and said they they're not happy. But I, I, I go back again to to a point I was making earlier. Part of the problem with this is. This is your first $70 entry. And I get that Game Pass exists, but we know the majority of people are not subscribed to Game Pass. They're buying these, these games, you know, up front. Mm-hmm. This is the first $70 game. This is the first impression. Xbox did not have a game in 2022, a major game. I mean, I love Pentiment, Pentiment and, and Grounding was great, but you get my point. Sure. Mm-hmm. It's perception. And hmm. I, you know, I guess just lightly going into the Phil interview, this is why I asked him the question that I did, because it's for this very reason, you're, it's almost like you got to be self, you got to read the room and be self aware of what your customer base is going to think of a game like this. This is go, oh, so this is what you consider next generation gaming. Of course, there are people are going to be balking at this. Let me, let me paint this scenario for you. If they delayed this into some point in the future, late late 2024 summer 2024 let's just pretend Mm -hmm. and during that time we got starfield it was great we got forza it was great we got hellblade 2 it was great avowed came out oh my god the rpg from obsidian i always wanted all these things come out right and then you dropped in redfall in the summer yeah okay yeah, all right, all right. Yeah, right. Let's keep it moving because look at all those other awesome games that I had in the interim. Yeah. Instead, now there's doubt. Now there's now unfortunately Phil Spencer has to say, you can't believe what I say until you have a controller in your hand for and, and experience it for yourself. That's yeah. a problem. And that's that's where I'm coming from mostly with Redfall is look, not every game's gonna be great. We understand that. Forspoken is another game that came out earlier this year that was not great. No one's talking about it anymore. Nobody cares because no one's yeah. worried about what PlayStation is bringing from their library. Whereas Xbox, we still have questions. And that I think, yeah. unfortunately, that's the biggest issue here where we still have we still have that wait until next year mentality. And no one wants to wait till next year anymore. People want to see results. So I'll just say it for the umpteenth time. I think. For the betterment of that game and for the betterment of the repu- rep- the reputation of Xbox Game Studios and Bethesda, they'd have been better off just taking the hit of delaying this for an extended period of time. In my two cents. So. Yeah, I was kind of back and forth of, of, of thinking about should they have delayed this and should they not have? Because, I mean, I, I, like, but we, we've talked about, like... Uh, this and ad nauseum and and we've we've seen delays happen over the like a lot over the past few years obviously because of pandemic and yep. and uh and things just weren't like weren't ready and also people didn't want a a repeat of uh of, of cyberpunk so people like the studios and developers were kind of scared a little bit to that they didn't want to release something that was half-baked or the, and and honestly as well like we have yet like this is sort of like the first at least from xbox the kind of like at least the first game that they've had come from from their sort of their branch of studios that was kind of seen as bad like we've seen like some okay sevens yeah it's an okay game but we've never seen it like we haven't seen this in a while of uh, just a game that has been like poorly reviewed in in in, in this particular uh state and then so i kind of wanted to sort of frame the the uh, the, the this sort of part of the discussion is is kind of like what happened to Redfall and Paris. You kind of got a little bit uh, of that answer because um, you uh, like famously uh, this week got to talk to uh, Phil Spencer on uh, on the X Cast, and I know that that wasn't uh, the reason why he came on. It just like it just I know how scheduling works with Phil. It's this is months in the making, and it just this perfect storm sort of scenario of the you, it's a bad week for Xbox, and you had him on, and it just you, this is what happened. So. So, um, uh, so why don't you t- like Paris? Why don't you talk a little bit about sort of what uh, you heard from Phil and, uh, and and his sort of explanation as to um, uh, what what happened to to Redfall? Sure thing. And off the top, you're you're correct. That was not the reason Phil Spencer was supposed to be coming on on Xcast. We had it scheduled that weeks in advance, and like you said, fate just happened to. It's just the timing, you know, of of Mm -hmm. what happened. But kudos to Xbox, kudos to Phil, because in the back of my head, soon as like soon as the Activision deal uh, got blocked, I go, they're going to cancel this. And then they didn't. Okay, then these Redfall uh, reviews came out. I go, oh, my God, they're really going to cancel this. They did not. So kudos to them for pushing through and Phil coming in. 
and wanting to answer these questions because you know it's I, I think it was needed to be able to address the community on on what happened. So to your point, um, he did address that he was disappointed in you know the end result that Arcane was not able to reach their internal goals for the game. I, I think the biggest highlight that came out of this, which you know is creating headlines right now, is the fact that there was an internal quote unquote mock review of of Redfall before it was shipped and. He said from a technical standpoint, it, it it was an acceptable level of it crashing, technical bugs, things like that. And I that I totally get because nothing sure. is ever going to be completely bug free. But he said even with their internal mock reviews and, and testing, the, the review scores came in under double digits of what they expected. So to me, that says because I think right now it's like at a 59. So let's just say it's high 50s, low 60s. To me, double digits say, are saying they thought this game was probably going to score in the 70s, which, okay, mm -hmm. okay, yeah, you're right. You know, no one's, okay, good, good, but not great. That's what a 70 says to me, anything in the 70s. So that would have been fine. But obviously we know that that, that didn't happen. But I, I think the thing that sticks out to me is, like I said, Phil mentioned when, when we asked the question that he never wants to limit a team's creative freedom. In other words, Arcane Austin's never made this type of game before. We're not going to tell them, well, you can only make Prey. You, no. Try, take a risk. Do something different, which I applaud, yeah. of course. We, sure. want, we want these studios to take risks. We want publishers like Xbox to enable these creative heads to try something new. That's, that's how you get, as I, I say all the time with uh, CD Projekt Red, that's how you get The Witcher 3. They had never done an open world game before, but they did The Witcher 3 and it turned out to be one of the best games of all time. So as an yeah. example. I mean, even if you think about like uh, internally in Xbox, like Pentiment wouldn't have yes. existed if they did, well, They were afraid to right. take it. I Fire Rush. I yeah, Fire that, Rush, that's yeah. another Which is one. one of the greatest games that came out this year exactly. so far. And that shadow drop. Exactly. Like, and, and and I'm sidetracking on that point. So sure. This is again yeah. why I thought they should have delayed it because you got a big W with Hi-Fi Rush. Yeah. You kicked yeah. off the year fantastically. And this yep. takes the shine away from that. But going back to the point of what I'm saying is I understand you don't want to limit creative freedom. But even Phil said in the interview Arcane did not realize their own internal vision for the game. So that tells me, hey, I need more time. So uh -huh. you can back and forth on it or whatever. Again, he, he's the head of Xbox. He's the leader. He ultimately takes all responsibility for everything that happens under his watch. So I applaud him for taking that accountability and basically saying, hey, he still believes in Arcane Austin. He looks forward to the next things that they're going to do and all that. All of that is is is. 100% correct and that is what he should be saying in that moment um, again it's just it's just unfortunate how all of this went down because it feels like and he even said now they're going to have to do some lessons learned and take some take a look at their internal processes of how they're doing quality control with this and obviously just the whole mock review periods all that kind of stuff the other interesting thing that I took out of that was he mentioned that because remember, obviously, one of the controversies with this was the 30 frames um, yeah. that it wasn't going to be 60 frames on, on console and that, you know, that was unfortunate as well. But it sounds like um, they outsourced to the coalition and rare late in the process before the game came out to try and help them. Whereas he mentioned with Starfield, they got internal resources to, to help help Bethesda more early on but he said the difference was Redfall was further along in development than Starfield was and that was kind of the reason why but what I and this is just my assumption what I take from this is part of their internal let's let's look at our own internal processes is I do think when it comes to that making sure these teams have the right resources and everything that they need to realize their their internal visions I do think Microsoft is going to be a little more hands-on moving forward for all their yeah. studios. And I, and I don't think that's a bad thing. I think that's a thing of, and this is how I interpreted it. Not that he said this in the interview. I'm interpreting it this way. Arcane didn't ask for the help that they needed until it was too late. Whereas there I was think, one, okay. Go ahead, sorry. No, 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 please. What were you going to say? There was one part in the thing, because I, 
uh, when he mentioned about the merger and how that game had been already in progress and all yeah. this kind of stuff, and they didn't want to seem and uh, like I'm paraphrasing now because I don't remember exactly what he said, but it got the vibe of we didn't want to seem like the big bad Xbox exactly. like Overlord coming in yeah. and digging into their stuff, right? Yeah. I've been through a company merger before. And Same. I can understand the apprehension, anxiety of the teams, not wanting to upset, also not wanting to dig in when you don't know the full scope of it. Because, yes, as soon as, like, the paperwork is signed, there's, like, years of work just trying to work out, well, how do we bring these two companies together? People yeah. have different working methodologies, different systems, all this kind of stuff. So, like, by the time that they felt comfortable, obviously it was too late. Yeah. And they didn't know that that was... A f that they had team new team members now that could come in and help them with this stuff. And that's why I said, like, we don't really know how and why it got to this point. It's probably just a combination of everything together kind of coming to, to affect them. But for Phil to be so transparent about that, that they really were conscious about not being overbearing when they acquired Bethesda, like that, that makes me respect him a lot because yeah. that's something they could have came in and just be like it's our way or the highway exactly <laughs> exactly and, and and again that's what i mean it, there's different ways that you can obviously look at everything that he said but from a more positive outlook of it i think you're spot on it was we don't want to come in as big bad microsoft telling you what to do and completely disrupt all of your workflow process like in other words you have a track record of making some amazing games we're not coming in here to change that we're just but we are here to help you if you need it and i think that's where, and again, I don't think there's anyone at, at blame because everyone wants to blame some who's at fault here. I do think there was a lack of communication. I think ultimately that's what happened in this scenario to kind of to your point, because different processes were like all this. How do we figure all this out in this condensed mm -hmm. period of time? Whereas I, I look at the example, like we got to talk to Tim Schaefer uh, when Psychonauts 2 was coming out and Tim Schaefer um, was pretty open about how helpful Microsoft was to double fine that there's there are literal boss battles that are in Psychonauts 2 that would not have been there if it wasn't for Xbox and their resources and being able to help them real again realize the vision that he always had for Psychonauts 2 and we obviously didn't have that same scenario here with with Redfall I I, I think ultimately when I look at all this it's it's clearly a huge lessons learned moving forward yeah. and, yes. and 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 I'm knocking on wood that this does not happen again because you don't want the CEO of the company having to come out constantly apologizing for things. And there isn't a developer on this planet that's making a game that does not want to make the best game possible. So so when I look at Arcane Austin, this is not a reflection on the developers there. They're way smarter than I could ever be because I can't do what they do. And obviously they wanted to realize the vision that they had. They wanted to make it. We'll never know the true business reasons, decisions, why they decided to launch now, why they didn't, etc. But I'm confident that the actual people making that game wanted to make the best Redfall that they possibly could. And stuff happens. And, you know, obviously here we are. So I look at it like I look in and I even said this at the very end to, to Phil when I wrapped up the interview. Um, I, I just said that, hey, it's bumping the road. I go, but I still think the future for Xbox is bright because I think they will learn from this. I, I think they will make sure that Starfield launches as the best Starfield it can possibly be, right? I think the four is a hell, like all these games moving forward where you can use this. Sometimes mistakes and failures can lead to success. And I think Gary might have said that on the show or whatever, but it's true. Yeah, I, I've had yeah. my own personal failures and, and screw ups that. I, I, I now use as, hey, here's what not to do. Go do mm -hmm. this. And you you make a better product or, or a better service or whatever because of it. And that's what I think ultimately will happen in this scenario. But hey, let's let's be honest. For the next few weeks, there's going to be a lot of chatter. There's going to be a lot of, you know, ill will, you know, all that stuff. But I think as long as Xbox just moves forward, get to that showcase, have a great showing at that showcase, and then Starfield. I mean, I mean, it's yeah. that simple. And if they can do that, if Starfield comes in and Starfield's a great game, which I, I feel good that it will be. Mm -hmm. No one's no one's talking about this. No one's talking about this at the end of the year. We're, we're talking about good stuff. Yeah. And, and I agree with 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 both of you. I think that in, in this particular case, 
there's a lot of there is a a, a ton of armchair game devs that have that 100%. have come out of the woodworks this week and uh, a lot of people who think they know a lot about game dev and how it works, and uh, and in reality they don't. And I've had my fair share of people telling me that uh, I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm like, this is my job. Um, anyway, uh, <laughs> I can see that it essentially in regards because you have, you have think of like Arcane Austin. It's it like like I could see where Xbox w again kind of didn't want to be the as we said the overbearing sort of parent uh, and keep an eye on because they saw okay they were halfway through development it's a on paper it's a cool concept it's something that is within our like not necessarily the system or the idea like the, the genre in Arcane's wheelhouse but hey you know what they're taking a risk they're going to try something so we trust you be able to make that happen but also. You have to think that Arcane Austin is part of Arcane, the studios in general, which is part of Bethesda, which is part of Zenimax, which is part of Xbox, which is part of Microsoft. There are many different companies Layers. and many mm -hmm. different policies, procedures, and 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 all of that stuff that that is still, as we said, like has yet to be fully integrated as of yet. Because again, this sort of is like, there's two other companies that are like, as part of this, that it's like, it's not like, as you said, with Double Fine, Double Fine and Xbox had a great sort of like one-to-one -one relationship because it's just, it just, there was not that many sort of uh, uh, things, to, layers to kind of go through. But with Arcane Austin, there was a lot. And and I, th I don't even think it's like, Arcane is still like, is under Matt Booty's sort of, um, no. his sort of like his no, uh, first party studios. No, I don't even Bethesda. think they are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's just all Bethesda. So there's still some layers that have to be integrated. So a lot of people that are saying that this is Xbox's fault, ultimately, yes, as Phil had said, it's he's taken on the chin. This is like this ultimately is his failure as 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 much as it is Xbox in, in general. Um, but I did like the fact that he did not put Arcane under the bus in that where other people might have um, or other people on the Internet are. But I, I think that, yes, you're right. Lessons are going to be learned about, OK, what like let's like maybe we need to change sort of how we sort of approach these different like uh like check-ins with these studios what do we like what do we need to do to be able to make this as seamless without as as less amount of red tape as possible because i've seen this from i mean in paris you kind of seen this like a little bit from internally on the on on the xbox side like they have a lot of red tape even just from microsoft in general like it just their policies procedures and everything and all that and and xbox kind of seems like it's sort of like outside of it but they're still very much in the microsoft with like uh, uh like overarching umbrella so there's a lot that kind of that definitely will need to be changed in order to be able to make this happen um but i don't think that uh a it was a bad decision to to necessarily to go the genre and the direction that arcane did um, I, I, I think it definitely was a risk for a studio that they thought they could do it with the arcane magic that we've known and, and loved over the past several years. I think it just chalked up to, you know what? It's a swing and a miss. Not every mm -hmm. uh, like a uh, uh, home run winner uh, or, or like the leader, like not even Babe Ruth. Like <laughs> Babe Ruth had uh, like everyone sees him as like the home run king. Even Hank Aaron is the home run king. But in in, re in reality, like they like Babe Ruth had more strikeouts than actually home runs. Not a lot of, not a lot of people like understand that. So we're gonna, like we're gonna see studios even I even heck we'll even say this. On the PlayStation side, we're probably going to see studios from them that are going to hit it, like going to swing for the fences, and then they, and they just miss. They strike out. Yep. And that's going to happen. It's not a if it's going to happen. It's just a matter of when. And I would say that I think at this point, it just it sucks with bad timing. And there could have been things like we could say all the different things that could have happened, but in reality, it, this is what it, this is what did happen. You did, all you, all you can basically do is just like you know what, chalk it up. Okay. I d like I'm still going to get another next at bat and I like and that's all that really we like Xbox needs to needs to do is just let's just go for the next at bat and it seems like either the next at bat's going to be the showcase or at least Forza or Starfield whatever it is it's next they're going to get another chance at bat and to be able to prove that hey Xbox is like they can still make great games which is exactly what Phil said we want to make great games so we can the, when you pick up the controller you're going to have a good and fun time and that's exactly what uh, Xbox is, is trying to do. 
Yep. Yeah, you exactly. can't score on any of the shots you don't take. You have to try. You have to throw shit out the wall and see what sticks. Like, Thank you for you... throwing in a Canadian hockey reference. Yeah. I was trying to think of something. You don't <laughs> shoot the shot. I was, I was like, let's keep it on sports. Um, but yeah. yeah, it's like, if you don't try, what do you learn from? There's so many cases I could pick out of people attempting to do things. and But then the next iteration, it's like mind blowing. And you're like, but this wouldn't exist if this other thing didn't exist, right? So they have to try. And if we don't at least applaud them in making the effort to try and yeah. to try again, and then hopefully the next time around it works, then, you know, then what what are we doing? We're gonna end up with the same repetitive stuff over and 100%. over again and get bored. <laughs> and I don't yeah. wanna be bored. That's what makes it exciting is something new. Yeah, agreed. Paris, any last thoughts? Um, <clears throat> excuse me. No, I, I, I would thank you for having me on. I honestly, we probably could talk, we could talk forever about this. I love these, oh, totally. I love these conversations. I mean, this is obviously not a fun topic. We're not talking sure. about how great, <clears throat> excuse me, a game is and how awesome of a time we did. <clears throat> excuse me. But I think these type of conversations are needed as well to kind of, yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, hey, Phil's like, stop talking. You've been talking all week. Stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, these these are conversations that are needed because with the, it's easy to talk about the good stuff. It's sure. it's hard to talk about the bad stuff. And again, I'll just give you some quick inside baseball during that interview. Part of it was for me. Now I'm, I'm only speaking for myself. It it was uncomfortable because I could tell that Phil was uncomfortable because this isn't mm -hmm. a, it, it's not a fun conversation to have. So it made me uncomfortable in it, but I knew there were things that we needed to ask. And I, I felt we got to most of them. We just simply ran out of time. There's more that we wanted to talk about or things that we wanted to follow up on. Like another big headline that came out of this is how Phil talked about it, it wouldn't matter if Starfield was an 11 out of 10, that's still yeah. not going to, you know, you know, swing, swing the pendulum, you know, in, in the quote unquote console war with, with PlayStation and Nintendo. And I, I think I understood what he was saying in that moment, but people are interpreting it and taking it a direction, you know, for clicks or whatever they're trying to do. That was that was the most insightful thing he said in yeah. the entire yeah, interview. It was. And yeah. I thought it was freaking fascinating yeah. and mind blowing. Yeah, it was. Considering how we've talked it about was, video games but, for years. But I will say that needed a follow up from us for, clar oh, yeah. for to yeah. clarify. I could tell that you were like the three of you were just like you wanted to follow up, but you had to like it's yeah, like the limit time. of his own time. Yeah, man. we didn't have any, enough time. Yeah, on and that. I even thought yeah. like even his thought about like when it, the Xbox One was this, the the console generation that the, to lose like like when he said like oh yeah everyone like it made sense like I think even even Mike had had mentioned this. It's like oh yeah I bought a ton of games on digital games off of Xbox. I'm not going to another platform uh just because and it, I, I think that that's the same like that i didn't even think about that and it makes sense that that's why like it, it, the xbox loss was because of the fact that the, it was so hard to be able to have, build a digital library and then everyone just kind of became entrenched in either playstation nintendo or xbox because that's where our library is and i think we have the benefit in the video game industry like we have like access to all three of the consoles so yeah. it's not like it's a huge deal for us but for some some folks that are just going in and buying a console like as a kid or they only have li limited funds they pick a platform and that's what they stick with so i think that's where i, I felt like you i knew you guys wanted to follow up on with the playstation comment um but it's just yeah yeah we ran out of time because because let me follow up on what you just said and i know we're wrapping this up so i'll try to make this yeah, quick it's okay, it's okay. but yeah we keep going that's that's <laughs> the point of of what i think he was trying to talk about yes is yeah this is why act or, or microsoft are trying to acquire activision this is why next week we're going to see them partner with asus for this rog alley because the cloud initiative is where this is why they have play anywhere it's because they're building an eco a digital ecosystem so that you're getting all your games through the xbox ecosystem but go play them where you want but now you're locked into that ecosystem you're not buying the games on i'm just as an example on the epic store or steam or on the playstation store places like this because if you're buying them in the xbox store I can still play it on my PC. I can still play it on my console. I can play it on my phone. I can play it on my dedicated handheld. I can play, again, 
play it wherever I want. Samsung with the, the cloud stream built directly into the TV, just fire up your controller and go. This is what I, again, I see the vision of what they're trying to do and it makes a lot of sense to me. In other words, gaming has grown beyond just the console is what I think he's trying to say. So it does not matter how, look, games are obviously important. They gotta make great games when none of this matters. But great games alone is not going to allow them to, in the short term, make up for the mistakes that they had in the previous generation. And that's what yeah. I would have followed up on. I'll give you a prime example and we can stick with Redfall. So the initial review code I got for Redfall was on Steam and I'm playing it on PC. And it dawned on me as I'm probably about 10 hours in, it dawned on me, wait, this save in progress doesn't go to the console. I'm stuck playing this on Steam on the PC. If I want to play it on the console, I'm going to need to get an Xbox. I mean, I basically I got to go into the Xbox ecosystem. So then I got an Xbox code. Now what? I start completely over. I am still playing on PC through the Xbox app. Yeah. But now that progress goes over to the Series X. And from the Series X, it bounced right back over to the PC and vice versa. And now that it's out, I want to go cloud stream it. I can do that. I can go play on the Series S. That's the whole point of what Xbox is trying to do. Yep. The, the the true diversity of play wherever you're comfortable playing on your hardware of choice is what they're trying to do. So that's that's what I took out of what he was saying. Yes. But the fact that we didn't follow up on it, people can assume whatever they want. And clearly we're seeing people are running wild with that uh, that headline right now. So it's been interesting. It, it is the most interesting forward thinking business comment that I've heard on video games in a mm -hmm. long time. Because yes. it's exactly what I've been assuming for freaking years. Yeah. <laughs> Especially considering we've lived through the cable disconnect right. now to Netflix, to whatever, to me deciding. And, and like even with the video games and because of what I do, I have every ecosystem when it comes to voice speaker and all that kind of stuff. And you start corralling yourself into one ecosystem to be able to do everything and becomes like your digital wallet ecosystem, yeah. everything, your life, right? Mm -hmm. And it's just, it is very fascinating for him to be that transparent. Everybody's taking the negative in it. And I think it's a phenomenal positive. Because it was then a again, truth. I'm thinking from an entirely right. different side of things. He's but, just speaking the yeah. truth. I mean, yeah. they, they see the numbers. They know what's going on. Yeah. He's just speaking Play, what Like PlayStation even knows this. That's why yeah. they're releasing stuff on PC. Like mm -hmm. they they see yeah. that they can't, that you can't live on just one platform anymore. You got to go where the players are playing. And the, right now, people are playing on the cloud. People are playing mobile on, on, on Steam Deck or the, yeah. uh, the, uh, the ROG Ally. Yeah. Yeah. Or the, the switch whatever like we're we're expanding beyond just the controller connected to one box and then that's it and mm -hmm. i think you're absolutely right like if, if that's why i've loved even just bringing it into the into the, the the theme of the show with game pass like that's why i think the genius of game pass is gonna of outlive course. these sort of like these swings and misses in that over like we're gonna look back on a, uh, on this year, for you years from now, being like X, I I fully do believe that Xbox will deliver on all the promises they made with Game Pass, and it will it will have its like quote unquote Netflix era where everyone was going to them as far as like being able to create these shows and movies. We're gonna it's we're gonna see that, and we're not gonna see placed. I don't think we're gonna see PlayStation and Nintendo on Game Pass. It could potentially be the case, but I don't foresee that happening. But what I think that it ultimately comes down to is that. This is this is one of the reasons why Game Pass is so important in that, you know what, it didn't exactly hit for a lot of us, but for some folks, Redfall might be the, like a great game for them and they can play it because of Game Pass and it was not a huge uh, uh, push for them or a, lot, a huge financial push for them to, to not being able to jump in. They can just delete, like play it and if they didn't like it, delete it and move on to the next whatever game that they want to play. And I think that that is like as you said like that is the genius i think of right now of xbox that's that's the that's the crown jewels yep. that's what they got and they just want to add as many games to it as possible to be able to make that even like sort of uh, uh more uh, more advantageous to players agreed and and one one last thing on on that subject this isn't the first time he said this and and a lot of people are forgetting yeah. this he talked about this back in 2020 uh in in the aspect of he was saying that PlayStation and Nintendo is, is no longer their competitors. It's Amazon and Google. And mm -hmm. that's where I thought he was going. Yeah. And but he actually came out and said it as verbatim as he could. 
Yeah. On mm-hmm. when you guys talked to him on was it Wednesday. Yeah, well, yeah. I, 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 don't, I don't even know you what day of the week it is anymore. What yeah. is time? Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm pretty yeah. sure it was Wednesday. Yeah. Like, and and that's what I was drawing from it, and I always thought that it was it, and that's why I've I've been. I have slowly kind of migrated into more of an Xbox gamer as that ecosystem and thinking about my online identity and my online assets and everything and how things have happened. That's when he said that back in 22. I was like, huh, that's interesting. And then he verbatim came out and said it in the interview. Mm -hmm. So I was like, "Hmm, that's fascinating. And uh, definitely something that not just video games, every single online and everything's connected industry now needs to think about Absolutely. because you yeah. have devices that follow you everywhere you're constantly being tracked your I, your information is out there and you know the best way to get it is by using tools and if you keep in the same ecosystem you know it's going to do the right preferences for you and mm-hmm. all that jazz that is the most forward thinking thing that I've heard from video game development in a long time. And I'm glad that he said it. And I am really sad that people are taking it the wrong way because I think it's actually super. Forward. Well, again, this is why we originally had him scheduled on to talk about all these <laughs> yeah. fun things. Was, <laughs> were you allowed to say that? Is that what you guys were going to talk about? We, and then I, I for sure. What happened? was the initial like, what, like ask for it? Was it just like, hey, well, let's catch up with Phil? Or was yeah. it just sort of like, what did you want to talk to him well, about? Yeah, we'll, we'll, we can get out of here on this. So th- this originally all started because... Phil's been on Kind of Funny a few times, but yeah. he's never been on the X cast. I was saying he's never uh, been on the X cast. Yeah. So that was the joke okay. that he, he, he's literally sat at the X cast desk before the spare bedrooms <laughs> yep. opened, all this stuff, but he's never actually been on X cast. So, you know, we joked about it. So we obviously, you know, worked through PR and was like, hey, if yep. there's one person we want to get, you know, for Microsoft this year, it's, it's Phil. He's never been on. So obviously we worked on it and got it all scheduled up and oh this is going to be great we're going to you know the whole thing and 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 you hear me say some of it at the end i wanted to talk more about id at xbox they have like a game yeah. camp program they did like game camp new orleans which i was a part of last year and then, and then it went to atlanta and they're doing some stuff in korea and over in sweden i wanted to talk about that stuff because that's all about enabling creators but then yes. even with the pc side to this ecosystem thing that we're talking about i wanted to talk more about their initiatives on pc and the improvements that they've done with the Xbox app on PC, because the truth of the matter is they've got to get that Xbox app up. Not they're they're not gonna be able to compete with Steam. We know that, but you have to no. get that app to a point where people don't mind playing their PC games through that app versus buying them on Steam, because now that's where PC Game Pass comes into play, all that stuff. Obviously we knew this ROG, uh, Ally, Ally, whatever you're saying it, was know. about to come <laughs> out, and how that strategy is almost like a backdoor xbox handheld because now you're going to yeah. natively because it's a yes. windows operating system you're natively going to be able to play pc game pass games on that thing and how that's going to yeah. work and how that's going to enable other vendors to come with handhelds i wanted to talk to them about the console shortages for the series x and kind of yeah. where they're at on that because i it's 2023 and i've still not seen one on a store shelf Walking in a Best Buy. Oh, really? I've actually seen them. Like no. in, uh, I've seen the believe it or not, in I've the famous the box. in the famous place of Walmart Canada. Oh wow! I've seen oh, the nice. Xbox yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah, I've seen I've seen the S, but I've still not seen an X. And then, and it, ironically enough, I know they just came out with a price drop today. I wanted to talk about uh, the the custom SSD. You know, the Seagate one. Mm, yes. yes. Obviously, yeah. I don't think it's official. It's rumored, but I know Western Digital has one or oh, is coming that's right. with yeah, one. I think they're making yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. But but the whole yeah. point is getting more vendors making this thing which hopefully will drive the price down because even mm-hmm. that one terabyte with the price drop is still 150 that's too much it's still too much it's a lot yeah, because a lot. as an example i got the western digital um do, do i have the two terabyte one i think it's a two terabyte one um i think it's like 100 bucks for the ps5 yep that yeah, I, about that price yeah, yeah. yeah. That's two terabytes for a hundred bucks additional storage in my PS5 compared to what you're doing there. So I want to want to have those kind of conversations. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Where, you know, a little, hey, what's going on with this? But nothing that's, oh, my God, what's what's happening? All doom and gloom. Because even when the Activision thing happened, we're thinking, all right, we'll address it at the top. You know, he can, you know, he'll he'll say what Microsoft's going to do. And then we just move forward from there. Yeah. Because that is what it is. Whatever happens with that happens. But the Redfall thing just obviously just completely changed everything. We we, we had yeah. to address that. There there was no choice but to talk Kudos about Kudos 
kudos to you guys because you yeah. guys did a phenomenal job because yeah. that and like you, you said it was awkward i could feel that it was probably <laughs> yep. going to be awkward yep. <laughs> and between yourself and gary and 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 mike like holy cow what pressure what intensity and also what a stamp on your guys' resume of all of the yeah. videos, of all of the ways it could have went yeah. and the accolades that you're getting from it. Like, way to go. Because, like, I, it I, just, it, it gives me so much, like, like at being a long time kind of funny fan, yeah. it gives me so much pride to see you yeah. guys do so well. Like, yeah, I love I, it. I, I will admit, I'll, I'll say it here, um, coming off of it, I just, I just felt drained coming out of it. Oh, right? yeah. I just yeah. felt kind of, ugh, yeah. coming out of it, right? But um, I, it, it was bugging me like the rest of that day into the night. And I, Greg and I was texting Greg Miller late at night and just saying it was still bugging me. He was like, no, trust me, it's going to be OK. Everything, you know, it's great. Da, 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 da. And he shared something with me, which I won't share publicly, but he shared something with me that really I was like, put my mind at ease. And I was like, oh, oh OK, I, I get it now because I was concerned how it would be received because it was so funny and, mm. and i know we're going on about this but i'll say this last thing as soon as we officially announced it i'm looking on social media and i'm seeing comments everyone's they're not going to ask him anything everything's going to be a softball question you're not going to ask anything da, 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 da. and i'm thinking you know, just, just wait. wait. Hold but my beer. With that, I go. I go. Honestly, it doesn't matter what we're going to say. Someone still. People are still not going to be happy. So I was. I've been pleasantly surprised to see the reception from it. Mm. That sure we could have some other things we could have asked or some things we could have followed up on Gary with your five minute speech. But <laughs> I love Gary. Um, <laughs> yeah. But That's so you know, it is what it is. It's what happened in the moment. And, you know, I felt like the most important things we got in there, which yeah. is, which is what mattered. I mean, sure, we could have followed up on a couple of things, but hey, you know, it, it happened. It's it's not the conversation we wanted to have again, obviously, but it was a needed one. I, I felt for, for not 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 only for us, but for Xbox as well, because I think to have the leader of Xbox, it just so happened to be our show that it happened to explain what was going on was needed for the community. Yeah, and I will say this too. Like, and I was gonna say this offline, but I, I, I definitely now want to say this like publicly. I think that the three of you guys did a, a phenomenal job with asking um, questions that were definitely needed to be asked. Uh, they were absolute like uh, coming as someone who has produced news content and produced like sh like broadcast quality like interviews and stuff like this. Mm -hmm. I, I like I've I know the behind the scenes of how these things can like how, how these things can work and how these things can very quickly turn um, ba like from what based on one comment or whatever. But I think you guys were it, like you asked the right questions. You asked you didn't you weren't you didn't back down, but you also were super respectful of uh phil and his position and, and and the fact that you were also respectful of his time and that this was not the conversation that you wanted to have and it was a very honest and transparent conversation that uh, I think that only like the three you guys could be able to uh, do and kind of funny in general could have been able to to do. And I thought, yes, it would like as you as you said, you felt drained afterwards. I've been in those situations where it just like it feels so uncomfortable and I'm just drained afterwards as well. But I I could tell that from watching it, I was like, if I was after that, I would I would have been like, this is this is good content. And this is good content that represent that represents kind of funny and kind of uh, kind of funny X cast well, and it it adds as you guys are are, are respected Xbox podcast and uh, and and I hope that uh, that Lee and I can be able to be seen as as that at some day too as a sort and of a of course, that of kind of a will. show for Xbox. Yeah. No, of course you will. Um, no, you do great so stuff. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. We're still early, but you know, we're, we're trying our, we're trying our little best over here, but uh, I, I do want to say, I give you guys props. You guys did a fantastic job and I, and, and there was no one else I think you could be able to done that, the, those interview, that interview than, than the three of you guys. So I appreciate, I pre appreciate you that. asking those questions uh, as well. Um, so with that being said, I do want to be able to uh, have a little bit of kind of like a, a, a last minute kind of, uh, kind of sort of not necessarily an icebreaker question, but just sort of a, you know, question to kind of get a tiny, get, get to know you a bit, Paris, um, before we kind of get out of here is um is there a game on game pass that uh you would recommend that uh, people should uh, should play um whether it's something that you've played with uh with your with your family or just in, like just you personally is there anything like that that you like maybe not necessarily a lot of people may know about that you think is like something is a must play 
Oh, you know what I have to do because I, I think I might be the number one fan of this game. <clears throat> game that came out in 2021. It should uh-huh. have been in the game of the year contention, and it wasn't Jeff Keighley. I because I, <laughs> I I'm lucky enough to be a judge on there, so I did get the vote, and it wasn't my vote for game of the year. Um, and it's on Game Pass now, and it is a game from Acid Nerve, Death's Door. It's one of my favorite I games. I think you were going to Death's Door, Vampire Survivors. Yeah. It was one. Of those yeah, it's, two. It's, it's one of my favorite games. It's one of those moments where um, I was in a. a uh, briefing for a day of the devs again talking double fine tim schaefer that group but day of the devs which spotlights a bunch of indie games i'll never forget we're in that day of the devs and they showed it and i go i, I knew immediately i go that's gonna be good i know this is gonna be good i i, I reached out to pr right after because if you go back to 2021 we had them on XCAS to mm-hmm, talk about mm-hmm. that game. That was me. That was 100% me. Because I was like, I want to talk to these guys. I want to talk about this game. And yeah, when we got, I got the review code and played it, I, I just fell in love with it immediately. I absolutely adore that game. I am all my fingers and toes cross that Devolver Digital comes out and says, yeah, it, they're working on you know a sequel to that. Because I, I would absolutely love it. And it's crazy. And they did have some obviously out, outsourced stuff to help. But two guys sure. made that game, which is wild. Yeah. I me. love that. Yeah, I love those kind of like little mm. story, like those stories of of games that do really well and just made by like one or two people. I mean, Tunic yeah. made by literally like one guy. Um, now, and, now, yeah. now, can I give you another game which is on yeah. my radar, which is yeah, due yeah. to now come out this year because it got delayed because of the war in Ukraine. But there's another game that I saw. Now, this was when I was doing the Xbox showcase. I got to see it behind the scenes for the first time when, they're, you know, they're because they, mm. they showed you on video, they show you all the stuff. Replaced. I saw that. Yes. And I yes. said, I'm all in. I'm all freaking in. This this is going to be another. This is my another death's door right here. I've been all in with that game. Sad Cat Studios is, is the developer on that. Sign me up. It. Here's what I hope think is going to happen. I think it's going to be at the showcase again this year. And I think they put a date on it. And I think it's a soon date, like late this summer, something like that. It's day one. It's day one on Game Pass 2. I'm all in. Can't wait. Oh, it would be such a great summer game, too. Yeah. Yeah. I would love that. Yeah. Cool. Well, Paris, thank you so very much for joining us and uh, and and taking time out of your day to uh, after a crazy week to <laughs> you know post mortem and just sort of you know chat about this and we we appreciate. It. We'll definitely have to have you back we uh, for for another show uh, at some point. But uh, for those who uh, they want to be able to uh, follow you online and and, uh, and 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 check you out, where can people be able to find you? Well, if you want to follow me online on on Twitter, it's at vicious six nine six on Blue Sky. It's oh. I need an invite to that. I need to get in on Blue Sky. I, 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 I do think we're at the point now. I need to start talking about Blue Sky because we might all be pivoting sooner rather than later. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm vicious six nine six and all the social media stuff. Um, and then I'm obviously on Kind of Funny, uh, mainly on on Kind of Funny Xcast, and I'm on Gamer Tag Radio. Perfect. Uh, all right. Well, Leah, where can we be able to find you as well? Give us all your socials and all that stuff. Sure. I'm Leah Jew on most social media platforms, but of course I do this podcast and along with my other weekly one, the Girls on Games podcast. You can check that out where all awesome podcasts are found. Cool. And also as well for this podcast, you can be able to find it also on where all podcasts are found. Just look for a search for the Xbox Passport. We appreciate it. Uh, all the early response. We've been loving it. And thank you so much for all the support that you've been giving us. And if you like it, give it a thumbs up or a star review or whichever. We really appreciate it. You can be able to find all the audio on, on any Xbox or any, any po- podcast platform. But you can be able to find the uh, video version on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash at Steve Saylor. And you can find me at Steve Saylor on a Twitter as well and on Twitch, twitch.tv slash blindgamersteve. And thank you all for listening and enjoying and make sure you share the show with as many people as possible. And uh, yeah, and as always, remain obediently yours. And when everybody plays, we all win. See you all next time. Bye. Bye.